everyone, my name is Stephanie Mao and I run Wool & Witch, an independent yarn and fibre dyeing business in Bristol and today I'm going to be showing you how to spin your own yarn from fibre to finish using a drop spindle. Okay, so most importantly you'll need a drop spindle, some fibre and a length of commercially spun yarn. Now with your commercially spun yarn, take the length, fold it in half and tie it in a knot. It doesn't matter what knot, I've done a slip knot here and it's literally just to make a loop and this is what's called the leader yarn. Now there's a lot of different types of fibre you can get but for a beginner I would recommend roving or top. So if you're completely new to spinning, you don't even have a drop spindle yet, you'll notice that there are so many different types of drop spindles. They have different weights and different features and that's to help spin different yarns and different yarn weights. The most common one you'll come across though is the top whirl and these are called the top whirl because the whirl is sat nearest the top of the shaft or where the hook sits. So to bottom whirl ones will have the whirl on the bottom and the hook still on the top of the shaft. These are probably the most common available because they're the easiest ones to learn on. So I would recommend going for a top whirl. Uh, Wool & Witch actually has two different types of top whirls. So this one that I have in my hand actually comes in the learn to spin your own drop spindle kit. And this one is perfect for beginners because it actually holds the yarn as you're spinning. So sometimes you might find that whilst you're spinning, the yarn slips around the whirl, which can get really annoying, especially when you're trying to learn a new craft. So I designed these to be unique and to hold the yarn in place. So you see how much weight I'm putting on that and the yarn's not spinning around the whirl. It keeps it in place, meaning you can get your spin and your twist into your new yarn nice and easily. The other one that I sell is slightly heavier so that's this one. It's slightly heavier because of the perspex, which means it is better for spinning thicker yarns. So the heavier the top whirl, the thicker yarn you can get because the more continuous it spins round. So before we get down to spinning, it's really important and I highly recommend getting to know your fibre that you're working with. So different fibres work slightly differently and they spin slightly differently and that's because of the staple length so the length of each fiber that's within that one you'll notice as well the fiber comes with a grain so all the fibers will lay in one direction especially with things like roving and top and hand carded bats now if you take your section and very slowly pull on either end you'll notice it get longer and the fibres will spread out very slowly and it gets thinner as you go along. Now this is essentially called drafting and this is actually what you do whilst you're spinning your fibre. So the more you pull it and the more you draft it, the thinner the fibres will get and so the thinner your yarn will be. So if you add a little bit of twist with your fibres, you'll notice that it gets very strong and it locks the fibres together and this is the same process as when we spin yarn. So let's get your drop spindle ready. So take your drop spindle and your leader yarn and loop it through the bottom of the shaft all the way up to the top so it just sits underneath the whirl. And then to secure it, wrap the yarn around a few times just so it's nice and secure and doesn't budge anywhere. Loop that leader yarn over the top of the whirl and then hook it through the hook at the top. You kind of want to make sure you've got a nice loop at the top by the hook, so about an inch, just so it's enough that you can add some twist to it. So this is roving, it comes in a very long section. So what I like to do is to take a piece and kind of take a section and pull it apart. So I very slowly start pulling it until it comes loose from the full length. So I've got this short section to work with. This makes it a lot easier, especially as a beginner, because you won't have all this fiber to deal with. So what we do is we take this small section and then we will, because we don't want our yarn quite as fat as this, what I'd like to do is actually split each section of this roving uh, down so I like to go 
go with the grain and pull a small section and it will naturally follow the rest of the fibres down the grain until you get a nice slimmer bit. So I like to do that sort of three or four times depending on how thick I want the yarn to be. So I'll do this three times down this one. So I've now got three sections to work with. Now there's two ways you can go about this. You can spin and draft as you go along or you can pre-draft your fibre. So I'm going to pre-draft this section just so you can see what you're supposed to be doing. So you take one section and you start very slowly pre-pulling it, drafting it ready. So then all you need to do is to add the twist with your drop spindle. So we do that on this section. So I'll we'll go full up close. So all you're doing is slowly pulling it so it goes longer and thinner. Just moving along the section. So what I've done is I've basically doubled the length on that one. So I've got my pre-drafted fibre and I've got my little prepped up ready drop spindle. And what I'm going to do is link that back up round the hook, pinch it between my knees, poke the fibre through the loop and fold it back on itself. Try to get some of this fibre out of the way. Then I'm just going to pinch it, the folded bit of the fibre, and then grab the drop spindle and roll it along my inner thigh. And what you'll notice is as you're rolling it, it's adding spin and twist into the leader yarn, and that's flowing then from the leader yarn into the fibre. And this is what causes that tightness in the fibres. So I'm just doing that just to secure the fibres back onto itself. And then I'm pinching with my other hand, pinching another section of the fibre further up. And then allowing that twist to flow up into my other hand. So I haven't got quite got enough twist on that one, so I'm going to add in more. You'll notice the more twists you add in, it'll start curling back on itself. This is good, this means you have enough twist to then add in further, further along. So I'm going to twist it a few more. Pinch it with my hand, that one up, let go, and then the twist goes up. And if you've still got plenty of twists along here, you can go up a little bit longer and allow the twist to travel up. So this is your new hand spun yarn, just there. And essentially, that's all hand spun yarn is. Once you've got a nice long length, then take the shaft and roll it. And all you're doing is you're winding the yarn onto the spindle. All right. And then hook it up back round and process again. Pinch it, add in some twist, let it travel up. And because everything's pre-drafted, you don't need to worry about that. You can literally spin and allow the twist to travel up. Now, obviously, the more you pre-draft and pull apart, the thinner the yarn. So you can actually make some really nice chunky yarn just by not drafting as much of the fibres out. So you see this bit is nice and chunky. That's because I didn't draft out some of the fibres. Then once you've got kind of a nice little section, you can add in your next bit. So this one, I'm not gonna pre-draft, so we're gonna do the park and draft method. So all you do is you pull out the first sort of few fibres that just make it easier. 
and then to add a new section all you do is you lay it on top of the other and if you've got enough twist in the section by the hook it'll pull in the rest of the fibers there so i'm just gonna and twist it slightly almost rub it in to the previous one and roll it round and then let the twist you just want to make sure it's nice and secure in that bit So I am just going to build up some of the twist in this bit so it's nice and twisted. Pinch it with that hand, park it between my knees and then take the large section and just very slowly pull it from the twist and then you can do exactly the same. Just make sure that you pinch where your fibres are because you don't want the twist to travel into the fibres because it'll make it a lot harder to draft them out. So hold that and allow the twist to travel up. Pinch, draft, pinch, travel. All right. And then if you want to continue adding more spin, you can continue it off. So draft, pinch, travel, pinch, and then you can go back to drafting again if you've got enough twist. In that one. There we go. And I've got a nice section, so I'm just gonna wind that onto the spindle. And you continue doing this until you've filled up the entire spindle. And you've just spun hands when young.